And so that's where the rest of these ways to bankroll your business come into play. They're gonna help you get from point A to point B much quicker. If you've got an idea for a new product or a service, if you have a hobby that you wanna turn into a business, if you wanna stop working for the man and go into business for yourself, or maybe you have a small business that you wanna grow, then this video is for you. I'm not shilling a single product or service in this video, nothing to sign up for, other than if you enjoy seeing or you wanna learn how a small business works, you see it go through the trials and the errors, grow, hopefully, then I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe button below and follow my channel. But as a business obligation, I'd like to encourage you, if you do own a tractor, to visit Boro Wheel Spacers. We are sponsored by them. They are made in the USA. They have a lifetime warranty on them. And if you own a tractor, you know it's tippy side to side. So if you want to add to that stability, visit Bora, link down below. Okay, maybe I forgot about Bora, but that's it, I promise. That's all we're selling in this video, so let's get to it. So I came up with 10 different ways that you can finance or bankroll your business to grow it, to start it, to keep it going. The majority of these are things that I have used myself over the years, maybe not all at the same time, maybe just for a small period of time as a stepping stone, but they can come in handy depending on your situation. Now, if you're like me going to public school, they didn't offer much of a crash course in money management skills or financing or just business preparation. And it's almost like they train you to go work for somebody else, and that's just not the career path that I really wanted to go down in my life. And so most of what I'm gonna tell you today is based on my own experience, my own trials and errors, my own research, my own journey that I've gone on, my own failures that have got me to where I am today, and I've learned more than I ever could have in school. You know, I think experience is the best teacher, at least for me, I don't know if you agree. So I'd like to be clear, this is my own information. You know, I'm sharing this because this is the kind of stuff I wish I could have read about or seen a video on 20 years ago when I was getting started, you know, help shorten that learning curve, which is what I do with uh, the tractors and, and the education and the tractor attachments and showing the projects and showing things that go wrong, not just the things that go right. But I think for me, that helps to be more authentic with customers. I don't like feeling phony. I don't like to feel like a salesman. I want to feel just like, like we're friends, like I'm just talking to somebody, kind of explaining what I do, trying to encourage them, give advice based on what worked for me. All right, so most of these methods of getting money, all right, to bankroll your business are gonna require interest, all right? And so interest at its simplest form is the amount that you're paying to borrow a chunk of money. And so if we take an example, let's keep it simple. We're gonna use $10,000 that you borrow. Let's say you borrow it for one year at a 10% interest rate. That means at the end of that year, you need to repay $11,000 or the amount that you borrowed plus $1,000 more. So it costs you $1,000 to hang on to $10,000 and do whatever you want with it for one full year. It seemed like interest always had a negative connotation, right? So even if you wanted to invest, say you put your money in a CD at the bank and it's gonna earn one or 2%, that's practically nothing, right? And on the flip side, if you wanna borrow money from the bank or on a credit card, uh, a mortgage, an auto loan, whatever it is, they're gonna charge you a high percentage, right? Maybe five, 10, 15%, depending on your credit score and the terms. And so you're paying all sorts of fees to borrow somebody else's money, and in the end, it's gonna cost you a lot more. But I think of money as a tool for my business, so I view it a little bit differently. And for me, I take a look at how much it's going to cost me to borrow a set amount of money and determine if I can make a lot more money by using that compared to the interest it's gonna cost me. So let's give you an easy example. Years ago, I sold boats, all right? So let's say I wanted to sell more boats than the cash that I had. So I needed to go to the bank and borrow some money from them. And let's say they were gonna give me $10,000 at that 10% interest rate for a year. So it was gonna cost me $1,000 to borrow that 10 grand, right? So to hang on to that $10,000 for 12 months of time was gonna cost me $1,000. So I took that $10,000 from the bank and I went out and bought a $10,000 boat, all right? Now let's say I sold that boat for $11,000. So I made $1,000, all right? And let's just say I did that over and over and over again. I did it 10 times in a year, which is pretty reasonable for what I did. So I sold 10 boats, I made $1,000 each time, so that's $10,000 in profit that I have there at the gross level. We take out the $1,000 it cost us to borrow that money, and we wound up making $9,000. So at face value, a 10% interest rate seems like it's a lot to pay for the money, and it is. A lot of rates right now are significantly lower than that. However, in this kind of an example, it allowed me to make an extra $9,000 I otherwise wouldn't have. And so that's how I view money. I view it as a tool. I only buy inventory with it. I don't use a loan or a line of credit or whatever we're gonna talk about to fund payroll or to fund rent or um, 
capital purchases, you know, for like a computer or for something for the shop. I only use that for inventory that I know I can resell and make money on. And I understand that every business is gonna have different products and services that they're gonna be offering, but for me, it's a way to safeguard that borrowed money so that if I need to repay it back quickly or if market conditions change or my business changes or something personal changes, I know that I can unload my inventory even if I need to drop it down below the market value just to get it sold off and pay off my debts, I'm able to do so instead of getting a loan to start up a new restaurant, right? And paying for your build out costs. What happens if your business goes under? You don't have anything or very little at least to sell off and recuperate to pay off that business debt. For me, that's a dangerous situation. So if you add a zero or two to those numbers, make it a $100,000 loan or a million dollar loan, you can get the idea that interest payments are going to increase, but so are the potential profit margins. And you need to know what you're doing, right? You can't just go take out a loan and cross your fingers and hope for the best. You gotta have some, a lot of market knowledge. The bigger the loan, the bigger the investment that you're making and risk you're taking on yourself, I think the more secure and sound you should be in your own decisions. And so that leads me to the first way you can bankroll your business, which is to bootstrap it yourself. And this is certainly the most obvious, but not everybody thinks of it, right? And I did whatever I could in the beginning. And so again, going back to my boat selling business, you know, when I bought and sold boats, it was a hobby. It was something I wanted a boat, right? And then I got one and I listed it for sale to see if I can make some money, but I used it in the meantime. And I did that over and over. But how I bought my first boat was I actually had a whole stack of tree stands sitting next to my garage that I wasn't using anymore. I had an old chainsaw that I wasn't using anymore. And I ended up bartering for a, a guy over in Illinois trading those tree stands and a used chainsaw plus a few hundred dollars in cash for my very first boat. And so the first year I did that as a hobby, I bought and sold, I think eight to 10 boats, something like that, just using it, listing it for sale, wait until I made some money on it, reinvesting all that and doing the same thing over and over. And I slowly built up the cash. And so this pattern can go on for years if you wanted to, right? But this is a very slow moving venture though, right? You can't move quickly from point A to point B unless you start out with really deep pockets. It's gonna take you a long time to progress. And at a certain point, that's a good thing, you know, too much or too fast of growth and you're gonna be in disarray, not know what to do. But for most of us, you know, I started off with, I think that boat was 1400 bucks or something like that. You know, it was way under $2,000 and to make a few hundred bucks on each boat I was buying and selling, it was gonna take forever to turn that into a legitimate business. And so that's where the rest of these ways to bankroll your business come into play. They're gonna help you get from point A to point B that, that idea or that hobby or that side gig and turn it into the full-time business that you want much quicker. Okay, so the first way is to lean on your friends and family. And this is gonna depend on the friends and family that you have, whether they're in a position to help out or if you'd even want to ask them for help. However, I have been fortunate to have both friends and family that have been in a good position We've had a good relationship, it's, it's worked out well, and it's been very supportive. You know, I, I like that they've had enough confidence in me to want to lend me money, and it's a vote of reassurance, I guess. Now, this can be a tricky spot because they are your friends and your family, right? So you don't wanna burn any bridges, create any hardships. And so for me, I, I'm the kind of guy that I really don't even like to sell tractors or attachments to people that I know. I just like there to be some sort of a separation between work and family. And so I haven't done a, a loan or an arrangement like that in quite some time. Even with us building a house in a barn, I'm hesitant, I know some really good builders, but I'm hesitant to use builders that I know just because of the fact that we have a friendship already, right? I don't want there to be some sort of a, a money issue or a difference of opinion on things that just tarnishes the whole thing. And so that's a big consideration for you to think about and not one to take lightly. Okay, next up is a personal loan, which is something I have definitely used in the past. And back when I did this, I don't know if times have changed and it could vary from lender to lender, but you could get up to a $25,000 personal loan, essentially no questions asked. You didn't need any kind of a business plan or any anything written or formal about it, you just applied and if they approved it, you got the money. And so a typical business loan is gonna be around five years and it could vary again from lender to lender. They're not often gonna be the best interest rate either, but it is an easy way, especially if you're starting out to get a smaller chunk of money. You don't have to take 25,000. You can take a smaller chunk if you want to and reapply later if you wanna increase that as well. And so this can be a good option to look into. And in fact, you can stack some of those personal loans if you kinda of get to that point, if you're kinda of in between the just starting out and 
like wanting to grow, you're able to go to different lenders if you want to. They're gonna pull your credit report. They're gonna see what you have on the books with other lenders, all your credit cards, your, uh, your debt payment history, all that kind of stuff. So they're gonna be comfortable and make a good decision determining if you can afford that or not. So credit terms are something that I use all the time right now and depending on where you're at in your business journey, is really gonna determine if this is an option for you or not. And so I use credit terms with OEM manufacturers that I can actually buy tractor attachments from, but we also use it for sub-tier suppliers. So there are certain products we sell that are uh, we're just buying steel parts from or doing a powder coating process or a packaging process. You know, different little steps along the way, not a full finished product, but either way, once you get to a certain point, you can typically establish a credit account with them and you can have maybe 90 days, maybe it's just 30 days, maybe it's a full year, it depends what they're gonna offer or what they're comfortable with. They may give you a shorter term up front and extend that down the road or increase the, the volume as well, the dollar amount, depending on how long you're established with them. But this is something I'd encourage you to check with the vendors that you work with. If you are buying products to resell, ask them. Oftentimes they're not going to come right out front and tell you unless you ask. So this is just one type of credit term that is available, but the cool thing about this one is that it's typically not going to be something that's reported onto your credit report, whether that's a personal credit report or the credit report for your business. Now sometimes they will, it just depends on your vendor. Now speaking of credit, there's a couple of other popular types of financing credit you can get. Let's talk about those now. Okay, so a line of credit. You may be familiar with that, you may not be. You might hear it called a HELOC if you're gonna do something with your house, or it could just be called an LOC or a LOC, which is what I have for my business. And so a line of credit is gonna be different than a loan, all right? Let's go back to taking out a loan. Let's say it's a $100,000 loan at a 10% interest rate. So you'll have a certain amount of years to repay that. So let's just say it's a five-year loan. You're gonna chop that up into equal payments with interest over 60 months, and you're gonna have it paid off in full at the end. So the difference with the line of credit is it can still be $100,000. It can still be 10% interest. However, as you pay it down, you're still gonna have your minimum monthly payments that are typically just the interest only. But as you pay it down, let's say you get it paid down to 50 grand, just for example, you can re-borrow that other $50,000, all right? So you can go all the way back up to 100 grand. You could keep all 100 grand borrowed for the entire duration of the term if you wanted to. Whereas with a loan, as you're paying it down month by month, you can't pull that money back out and start using it again. With a line of credit, you can pull all that money out over and over again as you're paying it down if you want to and keep on using it. So for me, I typically capitalize and use pretty much all of my line of credit all the time, right? So kind of like how we talked about in the beginning, the interest rate for me is cheap over time or over the course of a year or whatever the time period is. The amount that I can make and profit off of using that as a tool, using all that money to buy inventory and sell it and then buy more inventory and repeat the process over and over is very advantageous. However, some folks have more of a seasonal business as well. So you may find yourself in the summer months needing to use a lot of that line of credit or that money that's in there and then by the end of the year you're paying off everything you're kind of closing down for the winter and so you want to pay that down and not have to pay any interest on it and then you kind of repeat and start the process over the next spring and so as far as lines of credit go you can take the equity out in your house like what we have right here if you've paid that initial mortgage down far enough they're typically going to allow you to take out a line of credit or a home equity loan you're going to hear it called typically up to the 80%, sometimes 85 or 90% of the home value, and you can use that money as working capital for whatever purpose you want. On the flip side, you can get these in the business world as well, and everything in the business world is gonna be, or the commercial world, is gonna be a little bit more challenging to get, take more effort, more due diligence, a business plan, but rest assured, if you wanna go down that path, it's gonna be an option available for you. And of course, probably the most common type of credit you would think about is a credit card. And this can be a double-edged sword. You have to have some excellent money management skills, in my opinion, to be able to utilize credit cards the right way. But you do need to master your money management skills. And for me, I use credit cards in and out every day for my business. I use them whenever possible. It's nice to have kind of that buffer right in there to collect all the random payments that are coming in for me on a daily basis. Now, I pay my credit cards off every day. I have six credit cards currently for all my businesses and they're at a zero balance every single day whether they have five dollars or five thousand dollars or whatever it is on there i'm paying them down i use different cards for different applications different vendors now i probably don't need to use that many anymore as my credit limits have grown with the individual cards but it's still nice to have that flexibility sometimes if you want to have your um, mileage points or your cash points or whatever it is that's fine too but 
The main thing is you need to have those money management skills under control, otherwise the interest rates can grow out of control. Now this one may surprise you, but this is one of the easier ways that I've actually found to finance a business. I have purchased a couple of existing businesses so far uh, in my life, and for two of them, or actually for both of them, I used owner financing to complete the purchase. And so owner financing means what it says. You're using the seller to finance the purchase. And so you are paying them the monthly payment. And sometimes they're gonna require, well, most of the time they're gonna require a down payment of some sort. It could be very minimal. It could be 10, 15, 20%. It depends what they're comfortable with, what their arrangement is. But typically if a seller is gonna offer owner financing, they wanna have some skin in the game still to make sure that you're gonna be successful. And so that's a real added benefit there to know that you have somebody to lean on for advice, for questions. As you transition from old owner to new owner, you don't feel like you're left alone. So if you can find a situation like that, I would highly encourage you to look into it. They're more common than you would think. And oftentimes, if you're looking at businesses that are for sale or if you're reaching out and talking to folks, they may not offer it right out front. So if you ask the question, oftentimes they're gonna be open to it. So tying into owner financing, you have another very popular method, which is the SBA or Small Business Administration. Now, whether you're a startup looking to buy an existing business, looking to expand, whatever it might be, the SBA has a lot of solutions for you. If you are looking to buy a small business, and oftentimes they are gonna partner with and allow the owner to finance a portion of that sale, sometimes a down payment even, so that you can really minimize the amount that you have out of pocket. And then the SBA, and sometimes partnering with a local bank, will help to finance the rest of the purchase. But they are also gonna help out with working capital, if you need to expand your business, all sorts of different things. They have a ton of different programs. There's a lot of banks that partner with the SBA and serve as, and even have officers that represent the SBA to go through all those options with you and tell you what you need to do to be successful. All right, so this leads me from the SBA to the other version of that, which is just a traditional business loan. And so this is where you're gonna to go to your local bank and you're gonna ask them, hey, I have a business I wanna start, I have a business I wanna grow, I have a building I wanna buy, whatever it is for your commercial purpose, and you're gonna ask them for the money. And so this method, this approach can be a bit of a challenge, it depends. I have found personally that credit unions are a lot easier to work with than a bank itself. So I would shop around, I mean, we have, I don't know, 10 or more credit unions around here. I have found a couple that are absolutely fantastic to work with. I don't use a bank at all for anything anymore. I use a credit union for everything. They're just a lot more personable, uh, flexible. They don't have the big bank requirements behind them that are restricting them. And so depending on your area, this could be a little easier or a little more challenging, but look to the credit unions first. Even if I'm going to get a loan for anything else, whether it's a mortgage or a car, I'm going to a credit union and not a bank. Now, one of the things I will say about a loan like this is that at least when I started out, looking into this option used to be more expensive in the interest route versus going through the SBA. Um, for me, I mean, I use a lot of my credit cards as well and I keep those balances at zero so I don't pay any interest on that. But if there aren't any other options available for you and you can make the numbers work, the cash flow work, then it's worth considering. And that brings us to the last one, which is something I haven't used, but not for lack of trying, which is floor plan financing. And so floor plan financing is gonna be very similar to like a line of credit, for example, which is gonna finance just a big dollar equipment like say you bring on a, a new trailer lineup, for example, which I'd love to sell some trailers if I had the room, but it's gonna finance your big value, your big dollar equipment. So one of the main things I sell are used tractors with my current business. And so this type of financing is typically associated with that big type of equipment, right? So uh, cars or boats or RVs or trailers. And so the difference between tractors and all those other types of equipment is that all those other ones, the cars, the trailers, the RVs, the boats, they all have titles with them, whereas tractors don't have titles. And so for a couple of years solid, I was reaching out to everybody across the country. I would go through Google page after Google page. I'd be like in page 15 or 20, calling the results that I could find and seeing if they could help me out. Because at that point, I was stuck with the smaller loan sizes, all right? Like the personal loan sizes or uh, a small home equity loan, that kind of thing. And I really wanted to grow my business a lot quicker. And so this was the big hang up, the big snag that these folks would not finance me with a big floor plan finance program because I didn't have titled equipment, which was one of their product or program requirements. So after beating down doors virtually for years, I finally found a local credit union that was willing to take a chance on me and not do more of a, a broad-based backed floor plan program, but move me into a line of credit that required them to come out on a monthly or a periodic basis to verify the inventory matchup serial numbers and just keep close watch on it. And so for me, I don't think the floor plan financing is ever gonna work out. And for a lot of you, you're probably not gonna have to worry about that. But I bring it up because there are gonna be times, there are gonna be applications for folks, maybe a 
you sell used equipment, right? Maybe use zero turns or just use small equipment and you want to start carrying some new lines. Well, this is the kind of financial product that you could utilize. All right, so again, this is all based on my personal experience. These are essentially all of them, except for the floor plan financing, things that I have done myself at one point or another. You know, I've had a lot of businesses that have been great ideas. They started out well, but they failed for one reason or another. So this one's going pretty good. I think it's gonna stick around for a while. And so every single one of these financing products have served their purpose for me at one point or another. And it doesn't mean that because I used it before, it's gonna be the right tool to use in the future. But business evolves over time, all right? And where you were yesterday is not where you're gonna to be tomorrow. There's ebb and flow. You just have to expect change to come along. And so to have that knowledge now so that you can kind of start looking and planning for the future, maybe reaching out to credit unions or, or setting up your credit cards or whatever it is, talking to family and friends, any of those tools can be used. You can use some of them in tandem as well. They don't have to be exclusive where it's only this or only that. You have to have really good money management skills. I'd encourage you, don't grow too fast, but growing too slow can kind of smolder the fire as well. So you have to find that fine line and it's never perfect. It's never a perfect linear straight line of growth. It's gonna be up and down, you're gonna make mistakes, but having more tools in your belt can get you through it. So again, nothing for me to sell today. If you did enjoy today's video, we're gonna sprinkle in some more business topic videos in the future, but if you wanna see kind of the day to day and how I'm growing my business and how I'm conducting my business, then follow along, hit that subscribe button down below. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon.